A food revolution is underway in the tech sector, from sourcing food products to running a food business to gourmet meal apps. Hundreds of tech companies are working to fulfill a foodie's every desire. Here to talk more about this is Brian Hecht, a serial entrepreneur for nearly 20 years, a veteran of multiple startups, and advisor to many digital companies, including our own digital team. Welcome back, Brian. So, the Internet of Food. Yeah. What is this? We like to call it food tech. Just five years ago, there were only a few food technology companies that people were familiar with. Open Table, Seamless Web. Now, in the last two years, there's sort of the second generation of these food technology startups. $170 million in venture capital has flowed into this sector in the last couple of years. That's a lot of money. What do these companies do besides deliver food to me or make a reservation at a restaurant? Those I understand. Right. Well, they uh, address a variety of needs, ranging from the consumer to the diner, all the way to the farmer, to the restaurant owner. And really, because of the technology and the, and the technology infrastructure that's now available, um, along with consumer taste, this is really becoming of pervasive interest to everybody. Okay, so uh, one of the categories you mentioned was crowdsourcing. Yeah. What, what is that? So um, you're familiar with crowdsourcing, like yeah. Kickstarter, if someone's trying to fund a, a movie or a product or something. Well, now that's being applied to investments in restaurants and bars and bakeries. So if you think about you wanted to start a restaurant in the old days, one of the hardest things to do was to get financing. Now there are these platforms. There's one called uh, Equity Eats in Washington, D.C., uh, where if you're an investor, an individual investor who's accredited as an investor, you can go on and browse different restaurants, bars, and bakery projects and be able to fund one. I went on, and it turns out that for as little as $2,500, you become an investor in one of these restaurants. And they have fun little prizes, like if you invest, you, uh, you get a latte free every day for a year as an incentive uh, to participate. Okay, 2500 bucks is a lot for a latte every year, but <laughs> That's true. obviously there's other investment <laughs> returns on that. So, uh, and, and what about food delivery? Is that space being reinvented because there's those big established players already? Yeah, well, there's a few different trends there. One of them I like to call uh, couture cuisine, where um, instead of going broad like uh, Seamless, where they aim to have every menu from every restaurant, every menu item in every city, um, these are chef or kitchen specific uh, delivery services that have a very curated number of menu items. One example is one in New York City here called Maple that's helmed by David Chang of the Momofuku restaurant, uh, Mini Empire. Uh, and he aims to deliver meals for $15 in under 15 minutes. And these are very highly curated based on his culinary philosophy. Another one is in San Francisco called Sprig. Uh, and that's by an extra uh, former executive chef from Google, which, of course, is very appealing there. Um, and they like to call theirs uh, farm to phone, similar, delivering meals in under 20 minutes. Okay, what if you're not in one of these big cities? Yeah, that's another trend, is that this is now going national. Uh, there's another company called Order Up. They're based in Baltimore. And they're aiming not on the super big metro markets, but all across the company, uh, country. They have, uh, they have services in Georgia, in Colorado, in Kansas, in Iowa. And the way that they deliver this service is uh, by having franchisees in these different cities, which is not a model you typically see for uh, technology companies. And that allows individual operators in each of these littler markets to really know the food culture and what restaurants are popular and what the tastes are in those areas. And then they can really get on the ground with the operations to deliver excellent service in a local market. So we've talked about how they can get funding using these new apps. We've talked about how they, that food can actually get delivered. Well, what about the feedback loop, right? Right now, there's a lot of people that just use Yelp or uh, Grubhub or something else to say, right. food was great, food wasn't great. Well, there's a company called Anti, that's the Anti-Yelp. They can try to characterize themselves. Uh, it goes by Servi. Um, and uh, what they do is just like the idea of a mystery diner or a secret shopper from the old days. They send uh, consumers in. They rate the restaurants based on what the restaurant could improve on, food or service. They sell that information back to the restaurant. And then the diners, in, uh, in, uh, as a reward, they either get a discount off their check or uh, there is a meal that's donated to charity on their behalf. So you get paid basically for reviewing food. You get paid for reviewing food. And uh, you help it. the restaurants improve. All right. Brian Hack, thanks so much. Thank you.